Okay. Hello? What's up, guys? Hello? Uh, this is actually going to be Daily Dose of Classic number three. Okay, I, I just uh, I, I just happened to click Virgil on Photoshop. Virgil just for three months. Love the vibe of your stream blob dance. Thank you, dude. Appreciate that. Who was that? I didn't hear that. Frigio, tier one, three months. Thanks, man. So here's here's uh here's what happened today, guys. I did post the first daily dose of classic on YouTube. I think uh, <clears throat> I think people enjoy that. I think people like that. People people have, I've gotten really good feedback about that. So if you guys do miss a daily dose of classic, I want to do this every day or at least every day that I stream, <clears throat> leading up to classic launch. So uh, I, I'll I'll do this. I'll keep doing this. Uh, start off with some classic talk. I'll start at, we start, we got a little bit of a late start today. Normally I, I want to start at like three, right? And we can, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit and then we'll get into it. Uh, we, we kind of wasted a little bit of time today, but I want to do daily dose of classic at about three o'clock or so. Uh, and then going forward, uh, go into like a variety game or something like that. Right now we're playing Warcraft three. We'll play some other games down the road. So <clears throat> moving along. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna make this look. I'm just gonna make this look a little bit nicer. Today, what I wanted to do. Today, what I wanted to do was, I. Oh, you missed classic cast. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep doing classic cast. It's just that with between the dueling tournaments, end of the beta, world first stuff, like the last month has been like super busy. But we're gonna get back to classic cast. Stay safe is on his way home from London, and uh, it's gonna be good. So. Really good. Really excited for that. <clears throat> so what I wanted to do today, what I wanted to do today for a Daily Dose of Classic, uh, I wanted to Asian go... Asian Fire Cow just resubbed for two months. Do I choose Mage or Rogue? Well, it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to be Caster or do you want to be Melee? I think it's a pretty easy, uh, I think it's a pretty easy decision once you get to that point, right? QZ, thank you for the Twitch Prime two months. Faramus, thank you for the tier one three months. And Asian Fire Cow, thank you for the tier one two months. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> I wanted to look at this. I wanted to look at some PvP videos. I wanted to look at some PvP videos. And uh, we can kind of look at them, break them down. Uh, and I think there's uh, maybe maybe a, a couple PvP videos. We'll see. But I, I thought there was no better than to start with uh, our good friend, Zagratis, who he's not here right now. But uh, I think I think we should check out an old Zagratus PvP video. We've done we've done this kind of stuff before, but uh, it's been a long time since I've done it, and I think it'd be a good thing to do for uh, daily dose. Yeah, so I, I think it'll be really really good. What's up, Quick Streams? What's up, Derp? What's up, guys? Okay, so what I want to look at today. Zagratis PvP. Have all the guild apps been reviewed? There's so many guild apps left to review. Uh, I I, I want to get to that as soon as possible, and then I will I will at everyone whenever they've all been reviewed. <clears throat> we have not messaged people yet. I will at everybody whenever where I will at everybody in Discord, and I will message everybody when that happens. So, what I want to look at today uh, is it depends on how long it takes, right? Uh, I, I want to try and cut these segments down a little bit because the first one was like two hours, the second one was like an hour, so. Uh, we'll see. I, I think an hour is not that bad, but <clears throat> let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. My, I got my, my computer is being weird. So interested in banana propaganda. No, relax. So we're going to start with Zalgratis Paladin PVP, this video. Uh, and what I want to do with these videos is, uh, I, I want to, with what we're doing right here, I want to take Chris this. Chris Bonkroy just resubbed for two months, less than a month. Dude. Less than a month. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for the two months. Just get a new computer. I actually did. I just have to install it, install everything on it. So we'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and watch this. Let's go ahead and break down what's happening in these fights. PvP, I'll, I'll explain everything, right? <clears throat> so this fight, this fight starts with him getting polymorphed. Uh, full health, full mana, whatever. Uh, it looks like he's full mana. Uh, he comes out right whenever he breaks him out of it. He starts casting a heal, right? Uh, I think that what happens there, the reason why he goes straight into the heal, I'm assuming, I think it's more than likely that uh, he probably counterspelled him 
prior to the polymorph. So he knew that his counter spell was on cooldown. I don't think that I, I don't think that he would have started the fight casting a heal on himself had um had he had his counter spell up, right? Because that, that probably wouldn't have been a very good idea. But uh but he does that and he basically negates the opening damage on him. <clears throat> so yeah, he goes in on him. He cleanses. He doesn't freedom, but he cleanses off the Frost Nova. So, looking at this, when he cleanses the Frost Nova, he doesn't have any other debuffs on him, right? So he knows, okay, I can cleanse myself here, and it'll guarantee to get rid of the Frost Nova, right? And that way he doesn't have to cast another blessing on himself afterwards. So he goes through, cleanse, he goes up, and he's attacking him again. There you go. Throws a grenade on him. This is something, and, and this is something that you, I swear I couldn't pull this off on private servers, but we saw, we saw you able to do this again on the classic beta, is throwing a grenade, spamming your heal, and you can chain the heal into a grenade and you can get a full heal off. You can get a full holy light off on a grenade. This doesn't, I, every time I try to do this on, on, on private servers, uh, they would get out of the grenade beforehand. But on, um, on classic beta, I noticed you could do it again. So this this makes sense with the batching and how everything works, right? <clears throat> so something else to point out here is he's trying to heal. He gets tagged with the counter spell, right? So counter spell, improved counter spell, actually. Uh, now he can't counter spell. He, he uses counter spell cooldown. So going to this again because he knows the counter spell is used. He can basically free cast heals. And something you'll see about Zalgratis and the gear he's using here, he's using a Black Hand Doomsaw, and he has a lot of mana. A lot of that's because he's, he has Light Force shoulders. I'm sure he has a lot of more Paladin-specific gear uh, as opposed to, like, Valor gear, right? Like, I, I like to use Valor just because I like the physical stats and stuff like that, but he has an awful lot of mana. He's also buffed with Arcane Intellect. Um, he goes in here. Whenever he gets knocked over... Whenever he gets knocked over... Uh, I believe, is that his hot bar? Yeah, Goblin it, goblin Rocket Helm, right? So he uses the Goblin Rocket Helm to basically reset the fight. He goes, heals himself up. He still has that. He's got Judgment of the Crusader on him. He's waiting a long time to attack. Okay. So he judged Crusader on him while... Uh, he, sorry, he judged Crusader on him while he had the Goblet Rocket Helm. And basically what that allowed him to do is you can just get a little bit more damage in. He got really aggressive with it at the end. He even used a Consecration while he was stunned into the wall um, just to get every little bit of damage out so he doesn't get away. There you go. <clears throat> so in this fight, you got a rogue just freaking run around all over the place, opens up with a cheap shot. And what Zalgratis is doing here, he's going sword and shield against the rogue. And you'll notice something to point out, okay, Something to point out. He has readout up. He has holy shield up. Seal of command. And vengeance, right? So, he crits and he gets a vengeance proc while he has holy shield. What does this mean? This means that this is actually, this video is actually pre-1.9. This video is prior to the, uh, this video is prior to the paladin rework in patch 1.9. Meaning that you're actually not going to be able to use this specific talent build come classic launch. So, just something to keep in mind here. Now, essentially, the mechanics of the fight and all that, it's still about the same, right? Because what he's doing here and, and, and what he's going for is he has Holy Shield. He has Holy Shield. He has a readout. Uh, the Rogue, he has, he has uh, Retribution Aura up. The idea is, is that this Rogue is basically just going to kill himself by attacking Zalgratis, right? He pops Evasion. Doesn't matter. Look at all this return damage. Look at this right here. Pops, rogue pops evasion and hits him, and the rogue hits himself for like 100 damage immediately afterwards, right? 21, 22, 56. <clears throat> so doesn't, doesn't really matter that he has, uh, that he has vengeance up because the rogue is basically just killing himself, right? What's up, Keenan? Are you going mining engineering right off the start? I haven't decided yet. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think it's a good question, but yeah. So again, rogue has him stunned. He can't do the return damage on the shield, but uh, what he can do, is that a rocket helm? It looks like he tried to rocket helm him there. But um, 
doesn't work because the mob Driver is aggro on him. 95 just resubbed for three months. So, so. Been waiting three months for this shower stream. <laughs> Thank you, Raigarama. What's really funny here is he goes for the god for the for the death ray, right? No much death ray. Finish him off right here in a stun. Stun, finish him off with a no much death ray, whatever. Does about a thousand damage, kills him. So what's funny is this troll rogue shows up. <laughs> and I don't know if nobody hit. I don't know if nobody hit the this guy. And it just wasn't tagged, and he just wants to kill them for a quest or something. But uh I don't know what this rogue is quite thinking. <laughs> because <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Apparently, he helped him kill him, and then the rogue starts opening up on him. Um, the run back for this place is not very long, so I wonder if the other rogue. I've seen this video before, a long time ago. I can't really remember. I I wonder if the other rogue shows up and he and he has to fight two of them at the same time. But kind of the same idea, right? Where the rogue is doing a bunch of return damage. And, or the, sorry, the Paladin is doing a bunch of return damage on the Rogue, and, and the Rogue is just killing himself. Troll Rogue probably won a 1v1, uh, maybe, I mean, who knows. <clears throat> so yeah, he goes in. Yeah, it was a long time, actually, because look, he got another, oh, dude. Okay, so he gets a 2k no much death ray. Lupus A.S. cheered. X500. Ah, yes, of course the old classic gnome death frost nova dust hath been cleansed by the mighty paladin. Hmm, indubitably correct, my dear boy. Very hmm. five had a quite spiffingly excellent maneuver. Bloody marvelous old chap. Thank you, Lupus Deus. Thanks for the 500 bits. Marucci Lago. Marucci Lago. Thank you for the 15 months, dude. Good to see you, man. Thanks for the Twitch Prime. Chris Von Croy. Two months. I got that earlier. Okay. So, Lupus, thank you for the 500 bits. Um, so, something to keep in mind here. Look how low his health got. And this is the thing with the Gnomish Death Ray. Gnomish Death Ray, it's, it's a cool trinket. Don't get me wrong. And it's very, it's very meme -y. It's like, oh, Gnomish Death Ray. Oh, fuck. Okay, yeah. It can do big damage, but it can also do not so big damage. Right? But one of the big things about a Death Ray, especially if you can avoid the damage. Uh, or, sorry, especially if you can avoid the 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 hit at the end, it does a lot, a lot of return damage. So look at this. To get a 2K, 274. Like, I, I think 275 is about the same number. This ticks on him for 275. He gets really aggressive by using this here with that low of health. He, like, barely has enough. Because, look, he's at 800 health right now. Tick, tick, tick. He gets down to, like, 300 health, and he happens to kill him, right? So you got to be really careful when using a death ray. You you have to be really really careful when using a death ray. If you use it at too low of health, you'll you'll kill yourself, right? Um. Something else, Paldemore. You you ask one more time, why won't this build work and come classic? Uh, it's because the talent trees are different, right? Uh, specifically, what are we at here? We're at three minutes. So if we go back here, early on in this rogue fight, I think that was it, the three oh nine. Yeah, right here. So you can see that he has Holy Shield. Right now, Holy Shield is the 31-point talent in Protection. Vengeance is a 25-point talent in Retribution. There's not enough talent points to get these things. Prior to the 1.9 patch, I believe... I might, have to, I might have to look this up and double check. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think Holy Shield was the 21-point talent in Protection. And Vengeance and Conviction basically had like the the spots reverse conviction is five crit so you would get vengeance first Uzi's and then you would get plus five crit two months. my man oozes thank you for the two months appreciate that dude thank you for the twitch prime so yeah um i think that uh and not i think uh, i know that this is prior to to that patch because uh you're able to get vengeance higher up in the red tree and you're able to get holy shield out higher up in the red tree later on both of these things uh get moved down a lot <clears throat> Back to three minutes. Okay. Put the corn costume. It's not corn. It was a banana suit. Uh. <laughs> I 
Okay. Let's see. Oh, uh, he's a little bit of a little bit of RP action, old school. Old school wow videos. You're always gonna have a little bit of RP. <laughs> uh okay, next fight's coming up after this. Yeah. Okay, so another mage fight, right? Uh, another mage fight. So look at this. Remember how in the other mage fight, and, and look, sometimes you're just going to muscle memory and you're just going to hit freedom or something, right? But if you look at this one, he has two debuffs on him, right? He's got the one from the Frost Armor and he's got one from Frost Nova, right? So he knows that if he cleanses, right? He knows that if he cleanses, it's going to randomly remove one or the other. If he wants to get out of the freedom, like, right now, then what he's going to do is he's going to freedom to get rid of both of these as opposed to cleanse and getting rid of one of them. Wait. Is he is this bugged? He has freedom on him right now. Oh, let's watch this again. Hmm. No, he freedoms, but why does it keep that other buff on him? Maybe this is something else. Maybe I'm wrong. Or maybe freedom worked differently at the beginning? I don't remember. I don't recall it not working that way. Flowing attack speed? Maybe. Maybe it just gets rid of the slow. Yeah, maybe maybe it just gets rid of the slow, but it keeps the rest of the debuff on you. It's interesting. Okay. So yeah, anyway. No, it didn't even get rid of the slow. Huh. Okay, anyway. So he actually misses a grenade here. Is Hannah just your favorite item? It's good. <clears throat> so yeah. Kind of a similar way that he fought the other guy. Now, when he blinks away, I think he know. Yeah, yeah. He he got one rocket helms, uh, in order to basically close the gap and he can heal. I think he's gonna get counter spelled here. Did he counter spell earlier? I'm surprised the mage didn't counter spell him. I might have missed it, but uh, but yeah. Nice solid backpedal. So so whenever whenever the mages, you want to save your stun for whenever a mage blinks, right? Because what happens here is the combination of he does this. Whenever he blinks away, right, he goes ahead and rocket homes him, right, and the mage gets out of it using the ice block, right. <clears throat> Surprise the mage didn't counterspell, but... Um, but they go out of this. He goes, he's going to get another blink here soon. Whenever he gets the other blink, he has his stun saved. He didn't want to use it too early. And then that way, the, the mage is basically SOL at this point. And he's going to die for sure. So, yeah. The mage, mage screwed up pretty bad there, basically. So, yeah, right here. Uh, another fight with a rogue. And it's kind of the same thing here, just as it was against the other rogues, right? He's got Holy Shield up. He, I don't know what one-handed he, weapon he's using. I'm not sure. But um, he's using Seal of Command with his one-handed weapon. So he's going to stun. Is he going to judge off of that? No, he's not. He's just going to go ahead and go straight for the Death Ray and, and finish him off there, right? I think Death Ray is a really good trinket for, for Paladins to have. But it, it's, it's also kind of meme right? Um, like I said, a lot of return damage to you. So if you screw it up, then yeah. So this is a fight against a, uh, against a shaman, okay? So a shaman, shaman, especially orc shaman, is probably, in, in my opinion, I, I think it's probably the hardest matchup. Uh, you kind of have to have everything. If they have everything, you have to have everything to, to have a chance to kill them. Um, normally. So here's what happens. Rogue shows up, 
Right. It ends up turning into a 2v1, but he happens to have mind control cap on. And then all of a sudden he takes the mind control cap and he uses the rogue to his advantage. And then it basically turns into a 2v1 versus the shaman. So he takes it and he turns the fight around completely. Right. He ends up killing the shaman by the time the rogue is up. And then, yeah. And then all the ladies came and, and were like, oh man, Zagratis, you're so handsome. So there you go. So here's another fight against the shaman. So here's here's like a um, bit of advice. Here's here's why shamans are so good and they're so good against against casters too. Is Earthshock has a very very low cooldown, um, and it interrupts spells, so it's it's hard to cast. Purge specifically for paladins. Purge is like the key thing. Paladins are based around seals, blessings, this kind of stuff. So um, what you have to do. This is what this is what I, I think you should do against shamans. Use lower ranks of blessings, and if they're spam purging you, then they're burning their own mana. It indirectly works as a mana burn against the shamans, right? So using lower ranks of blessings to do that. And then if they eventually stop purging you, then you can cast a higher rank of a blessing. Same thing with your seal. Rank one seal of command in PvP. Rank one seal of command, it costs you about 55 mana, okay? Not only that... You start using your seals and don't use them like buffs. Use them if, as if they're attacks. What does that mean? That means when you're about to swing, let me show you this. Let's say let's say they're just like just just perch 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 just spamming perch right. So here's what you need to do. You need to go. You need to go. And here's your here's your swing timer right. Here's your swing timer. Again, I like to use 3.5 because that's an Ash Gandhi, right? And it's, it's kind of like an easy number to remember. So let's say your, your attack is at 3.5 seconds and he's just spamming, just, just, just purge nonstop, right? He's just spamming purge. If you cast at this point, seal of command, you can hope to swing, right? You can hope to swing right here, right after you cast your seal. Hopefully you get a proc. And then he will purge it right after, right? And then you wait. I'd recommend rank one, right? You wouldn't, against a shaman, you, put, you, you, you probably wouldn't max rank unless you have a free shot at a judgment on, uh, during a stun or something like that, right? I think you should still try and judge when you can, even with rank one, right? Because if you can judge... If you can judge and get a vengeance proc off a crit or something, then that's big damage. So you still want to judge, but you shouldn't rank five unless you got a free shot. I think at a at a stunned uh, at, at a stun uh, judgment of command. So he's gonna get rid of it. So then you just go and you repeat this process right here, uh, and then he's gonna end up like basically mana burning shaman, right? So this is how you mana burn shamans, and uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of how that goes. And uh, not a lot of I mean not. Not a lot of people do that against shamans. I, I do think shamans are still incredibly hard, but for me, I, I think this is a this is like a little tactic that I do that uh, helps out a whole ton versus shamans. So, yeah. What is it? Pure? It says purge. Purge. Sorry. Okay. So back to the video. <clears throat> so yeah, here against the shaman. The shaman he 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 purged him pretty good, right? He purged him pretty good early on, but he ran low on mana. So this is a situation where he just managed his mana better than, than the shaman, despite the fact that he was purging him, right? So let's see. Let's kind of go back a little bit. Uh, oh, this, this video starts out when he's, when he's kind of low on mana anyway. Something else is the grounding totem. Something else is the grounding totem. You want to make sure that whenever he drops a grounding totem, you, you try and kill it. Maybe you can tab judge, something like that. Um, if you judge it, maybe you can crit and get a Vengeance proc. That'd be cool. Uh, but also, if you can judge it, then I say tab and just target the other one. You can tab maybe, but whatever. Um, if they have a lot of totems down, then that's kind of hard because you, you guys know what I mean. But anyway, you, you target the grounding totem. You kill it. That way, it opens him up for stun. If he has grounding totem down and you stun, it's going to be immune because he's going to, take, he's going to eat the stun. Same thing for repentance. Right? Same thing for rep repentance. Uh, Zentrex, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Appreciate that. Truck Stomp, what happens when you get one Wind Fury one shot because hashtag Shaman is life? Well, you don't. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> just, 
Just just don't get one shot. Yeah. If it eats spells, why target it? It doesn't kill it. Like if I hammer of justice, it doesn't kill it. See, there's a grounding totem. He does he does it right there. Look. So he drops a grounding totem. He goes, he clicks on it. Grounding totem. Let me bomb, kill it. Bop it. And then that way he's opened up for a stun. I, I'm sure he's going to stun him here soon. Um, maybe. He does have his stun up. I thought maybe he would stun him during the heal or something. Maybe he's just he maybe he's just saving it, waiting on it. But he's basically him going one hand and shield against him. Part of it's the tri spec build from pre one point nine. Uh, and he's just kind of like whittling him down. Also, having high armor is probably nice against the, the big wind furies. So. I don't know why he didn't stun him. I, I don't know what's going on there. Because he probably... I, I would have thought that he would have stunned him there whenever he's low in health and he's healing. Because he has no grounding totem or anything down. Uh, what happens when the shaman uses more than one totem and he actually has more than two IQ? Nothing, because you still have to click the grounding totem and kill it. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make a difference, right? You just got to target it and kill it, right? Uh, explaining why he's using sword and shield over two hand, is it better in PvP? Uh, it's nice for some fights, right? But specifically, it's, it's part of the build he's going with. It's tri-spec where he has Holy Shield and Command and Vengeance and all this stuff. So he's trying to use Holy Shield to his advantage and, and basically the return damage and stuff like that. If he gets a Wind Fury proc, it swings three times. So swings three times, three more chances it blocks, three, three chances at return damage off of a block. So that's, that's probably why he did that. So he doesn't interrupt the Paladin healing in front of him. Well, part of that's because he was so low on mana. Uh, Zagratus did a way better job of managing his mana than the shaman did, and the shaman ran oom, um, and basically he had to use anything that he had to, to basically try and survive. So, <clears throat> okay, let's see. What is this fight here? Is this two v three? Okay, this is a two v three fight. This will be fun to watch. So let's let's uh, let's start it back here. So. Fight starts right here. Mage is sheathed. Good. So as Paladin, what, what's happening here? You've got Paladin Mage versus what looks like Warrior Mage. I thought there was three guys. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, oh, this is a Warlock that showed up? Okay. So, yeah, and a Warlock. Uh, that Mage is probably going to die. It's so interesting watching these fights without... Uh, without the UIs that everybody has now, like target of target and whatever. So mage is still good. He just turns and he's just helping heal the mage uh, while they're focusing on that guy. <clears throat> now these guys, the, the guys that he's fighting against are doing a pretty bad job of managing like CC and stuff, right? Uh, now the paladin does have versus bubble. There's bop. I think bubble had a different icon before but I'm not seeing it. Why do I not see bubble? Oh, no, there it is. Same icon. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So if, if he were to get CC'd, right? Hypothetically, if he were to get CC'd, he could bubble out of it and like spam heal the mage, right? Um, so he's got mortal strike on him and he heals him through the mortal strike. Uh, but the mortal strike drops right before he heals him so literally right before the right before the mortal strike or right after the mortal strike drops uh the heal goes off so he gets a full full value heal uh it basically ends up saving the mage because that heal was was pretty significant i mean he would be dead by now right still keeps healing him sometimes and, and this is the thing that's so nice about paladins and pvp like you, you got to know your role and, and that's why i love watching these Zalgratis pvp videos because he does not play the game like he's he's a wannabe warrior Willie okay. B. Chips just resubbed for three months. He hasn't played the game like a days. warrior. Let's get hyped, boys. Thank you, Willie. Thank you for the three months, dude. So, yeah, I think that, uh, I think this is the, this is a huge issue, huge issue for, for paladins, uh, 
And, and it's, it's like bad for like the perception of Rhett Paladins too. It's you see a lot of guys who they go and basically like, oh, do I play a Paladin or a Warrior? They're two totally different classes, right? You are, you are a support DPS, right? You're a hybrid. You can heal, you can buff, you have a lot of utility, right? Zalgratis knows his role, and that's what, why it's fun for me to watch PvP videos like this, especially when he's in group fights. Because he knows when it's like, okay, I, I don't want to just like, uh, just like ram my head against the wall and just go and charge him and try and do damage. Sometimes it's best to support somebody else and let them do the damage in a fight while you back off and then you wait for your opportunity to go in, right? Which is exactly what he does in that last fight, right? He heals him, he keeps him up, then he goes in and, and gets the big hits and does the damage. So, yeah. Zilla PK, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Abraham Sater, thank you for the tier two sub. Abraham, thank you for the tier two. And we'll lead ships three months. We got that too. Okay, great. Uh, do you think Classic will be delayed? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think the stress test being delayed is... Uh, I, I don't think it has anything to do with Classic being delayed. Um, yeah. So... L White Monkey, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Thank you, dude. So in this fight, he's got... Oh, this is great. So he's fighting a... Was this a priest? He's trying to mana burn him, yeah. Okay. So, so and yeah, he's got the... Okay. So... Shadow Word Pain. So here's the thing. He uses... The Bear Off Trinket against him whenever you're a paladin and you have the bear off trinket used against you now does he have reckoning i would expect that he has reckoning uh whenever you have the bear off trinket used against you and you have reckoning right and these guys get crits it gives you reckoning procs so it's always nice Right now he starts out using the sword and shield, right? He starts out using the sword and shield against these guys and, um, or I guess mace part of the reason for that before he swaps, it's like, okay, well, why not just use a two hander against the caster? He's doing a lot of return damage against these guys, right? And the return damage against these guys, he even uses holy shield, right? Even though the priest isn't hitting him, the return damage actually kills those guys off, right? So he kind of gets what he needs, whatever. Kills off the adds, so it negates his trinket. After that, he swaps to his two-handed weapon. After that, he swaps to Black Hand Doomsaw. So then he goes in with a priest, fights against priests. It's it's kind of like a battle of attrition, mana management. It's it's really tough because they can just mana burn you, right? Uh, but we can see here is he went and he actually used Shadow Resist Aura, which is uh, it's I, you should definitely be using it as a priest. Resistance is really, really strong. So I, I used to even run around with a shadow resist suit on my character. So he goes and he kind of cuts this fight probably because it lasted forever. He he feared and then he comes back and the priest is out of mana. I wish we knew how he runs out of mana. But uh, whenever he sees that the that priest was out of mana, he had a little bit of mana. He gets really aggressive with it and he bubbles. He bubbles and goes in on him. The reason for this is because... If the priest fears you, it gives them enough time. You go this way, they go that way. And it gives them enough time to get out of combat and to get a few ticks of drink off before you can catch up to him. So he gets really, really aggressive here, which, again, good idea. It was right. Uh, right here. So also what he does, he pops the shield and he cancels it. So why'd he cancel his shield? Do you guys know? The reason why he canceled his shield is because... Now, he technically screwed up, and this is something that... It, you, you might screw this up regularly, too. It might just happen, right? <clears throat> the reason why he canceled his shield is because in Vanilla WoW, you have a 50% attack speed debuff uh, after you swing, if you have your bubble up. So... What happens here, he actually triggers it because he attacks. I, I, I'm almost positive that was not his intention, right? Given that he canceled it, like, literally right afterwards. Uh, but he has a, what is this? Is this a three and a half second weapon? I, I can't remember with Black Hand Doomsaw. But uh, it might be, be 3.4. 
Black hand, Doom Saw. Um, classic. Yeah, 3.5. Yeah, that's what it was. So what ends up happening here is he uh, he swings, so then he ends up having like a he, he ends up having a 50% attack speed uh, bonus on the next swing. Or sorry, decrease on the next swing. So he's not gonna cast now he's gonna swing for a long time. But ideally, in that situation, he would have canceled it right after so that he could have kept swinging at full speed right before attacking. Weapon speed is normalized in classic anyway, so it doesn't matter. No, 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 not true, right? So weapon speed normalization, what that means, Dusty, is if you're using an instant strike. So what are some examples of instant strikes? Mortal strike. Sinister strike. Bloodthirst. These types of abilities, right? So on. These types of abilities, these get normalized to certain values based on the weapon type. Okay, so if you have a two-handed weapon, the normalization value is 3.3. So what that means is whenever they go off your weapon damage, instead of looking at your actual weapon damage, what it does is it looks at your DPS and then it multiplies it by 3.3 with a two-handed weapon, right? For a one-handed, I believe it's 2.7. Is it? I believe it's 2.7 for one-handed weapons. Um, let me double check this, actually. Weapon speed normalization. I don't want to. I don't want to give you guys wrong information. Normalization. Lupus Deus cheered. X five hundred. You forgot sexy strike and tickle taunt. Hi chat. Thanks, Lupus. Appreciate that, dude. Uh, two point four. My bad. That's right. That's a good thing I checked. So two point four for instant or for for one hand, right? But specifically for daggers, and this is what I was getting confused on. For daggers, it's one point seven, right? For daggers. There you go. And uh, for range, it's 2.8, right? Range 2.8. So like for bows and stuff. Um, so basically what happens here is you have all these things, DPS times the normalization value, as opposed to uh, your actual weapon speed increase. Like, because you might have like two items that are like 50 DPS, but if it's slower, it has more damage range. The damage range, the top end damage is higher right? Uh, what it does is it takes it off of that, so then basically your instant strikes are normalized. This is basically a nerf to rogues, warriors, all this stuff, uh, because what was happening is you had specific items that were really, really slow. Arcanite Reaper, right? Arcanite Reaper, um, you had Deathbringer, the one-handed, uh, all kinds of stuff, right? That were really, really slow. And what was happening, it was making these weapons a little bit better. Yes, the Nicker as well, because that was 4.0 speed axe. Uh, these, it was making these weapons better than they were intended versus the raid weapons that might have been a little bit faster, right? So here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you have a class... that has no instant strikes. <laughs> Normalization means nothing to you. So basically, weapon normalization was like an indirect buff to Paladins. <laughs> so, no, not, guys, come on, relax. Relax, dude. Okay, um, yeah. So yeah, that's how, that's how weapon normalization works. So for Paladins, Weapon normalization does not go into effect. That's basically my point. So there you go. Kills the priest. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, so it has no. Okay, here's what's happening. Let me let me let me roll this back a little bit. Okay, so kind of same thing here against the uh, against the rogue. Uh, what you'll see a lot of times, especially in this video, right, with with the build that he's running, where he's using a shield and sword or shield and mace, <clears throat> he's gonna go for the return damage, right? Red aura, holy shield, all this stuff. Right here, he bops. They changed this. Bop didn't have a graphic. It didn't have an animation in early WoW. Uh, so you can see there's nothing on him. There's nothing around him. And this rogue is probably just attacking him. Like, what the, what the crap's going on? And he had no idea why he was immune. Uh, what the rogue could have done here is the rogue could have blinded him while he was using Blessing and Protection. This is part of the reason why human ro human paladins uh, are worse in PvP than dwarf paladins in, uh, in some respects. It's the fact that they don't have a way to get out of poisons. They don't have a way to get out of blind. Because poisons... Or not a physical ability if you bop yourself against a rogue then they blind you through the bop and they can waste your entire bop and uh just one of the ways like it's like a big meme right the paladins are really good against rogues i think if a rogue knows what he's doing the rogue has so much control that he's able to reset the fight and run the fight to his advantage and uh i, I think they have a lot of ways to kill paladins but but the rogue just has to know what he's doing so Anyway. He goes for this. He Did he get him out? He throws the grenade on him and he vanishes as he does it. I think he gets him out. Yeah, he got him out with the grenade. <laughs> so that was a really well-timed grenade and a really badly timed vanish. <laughs> so just really, really unlucky. Yeah, yeah, really, really unlucky. Uh, yeah, okay, good old vanilla, vanilla bugs, so. Normalization affects AP calculations, not weapon damage. That's why a slower weapon is still better, but not as good as before. Uh. No, that, that's, that's not how, no, that's not how it works for Ocean Psych. It, it works like, uh. It, it's, it's, it's basically, it's, it's off damage. It, it's not with AP calculations. So here's how, here's how normalization works. So weapon normalization, kind of going on with this. Uh, weapon normalization, how it works is you have your total damage, okay? You have your total damage. And this is the number that's calculated by taking basically what your base weapon damage is, right? It takes your it takes your base weapon damage and at least as far as I understand right how it rises ease okay I'm sorry well okay so so here's the thing you take your base weapon damage before it was basically based entirely off your weapon damage your total damage but now it's taking it off your weapon speed and DPS that's that's the best way I think I can explain it the, the most like layman term is you can, instead of just going off your weapon damage on your character screen, it, it calculates it based on DPS and weapon damage. Or, uh, sorry, weapon DPS. Does that make sense? Did you read Classic WoW interview that came out today? It's on Eurogamer. I did not. Can you link it to me? I think that'd be good to talk about right here. Annie, hey, how are you? Wait, is Annie here or are you just randomly adding Annie Fuchsia? She's not here. What the frick? Okay, unbelievable. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. It still uses weapon damage? Yeah, well, no. Okay, it still uses weapon damage, right? It still uses weapon damage. But the weapon damage is for the autos, you see?
Mm -mm -mm -mm. Raygonk Force, thank you for the Twitch Prime. And B Shady, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Appreciate that, dude. Also, Storm from Nolan Roost Poison, but makes you immune for like 10 seconds. Yeah, immune for poison for 10 seconds. Look at this picture. There's an error in the matrix. Oh, wow, that's weird. Yeah, that is weird. The heck? Yeah, I don't know how that works. This is a classic WoW interview that came out today. Yeah, we'll take a look at that in a second. So, like, <clears throat> I'm not saying, uh, and here's the thing. Let me let me explain. It's not it's not that you're you're totally disregarding the weapon damage. Don't get me wrong, right? But m my point is. My point is, is that the, the weapon speed, right, the weapon speed that's used is changed from, the, the formula changes from using a weapon speed that's on your character's weapon to a set weapon speed based on your, on your weapon type. Does that make sense? Am I going to play Warcraft 3 today? Yes, I will. Does that make sense? Kevin, what's up, dude? Kevin, I haven't seen you in forever, dude. Where you been? I feel like it's been forever since I've seen you. How freaking hard will you go on classic? Uh, I mean, I'm going to play the game the way that I play the game, right? Like, I I'm going to have more of a... Um, like, my raid is going to be more of a progression style of raid. It's not going to be super hardcore. More of a progression style of raid. Uh, very much in the same vein of my, my last guild uh, that I became guild leader of eventually. But I, I didn't start that guild. There's some things that, that would have been different, I think, with the guild had I, had I started from scratch. Um... Just some way that things were ran and how it took a long time to like kind of get stuff going and people getting into a rhythm and stuff like that. So that's that's kind of that's kind of how it is. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, let's take a look at this as well today uh, before we move on to our game today. So again, continue on Daily Dose of Classic. By the way, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, if you guys have any suggestions of, of things you want me to talk about anything like that, like feel free to leave a comment and um, do all that and just kind of let me know like, okay, like it'd be cool if you talked about this or you talked about that, right? <clears throat> anyway, um, sure, I have not seen this yet. I have not seen this, but we can go ahead and take a look at this. This looks like a big interview with, looks like Brian and Omar. So this will be fun. Okay. Uh, I still can't believe it's really happening. World of Warcraft Classic. Blizzard has remade WoW as it was all those years ago when it launched. Don't look at the dates. It's a bit depressing. Where'd all that life go? Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. Let's just get to the interview. So. Wait. As the door closes on the beta and this theme knuckles down in preparation for the launch, I take lead software engineer Ryan Birmingham and senior software engineer Omar Gonzalez aside for a chat. Dude, I say this all the time, dude. Omar gets all the love. Omar gets all the love. <laughs> Brian is forgotten. Dude. Like, what the heck, dude? Like, whoever, dude, Brian Pepe hands. Like, at least get his name right, dude. He's the lead software engineer. <laughs> like, dude. Brian Pepe hands, dude. Unbelievable. Omar, Omar's the one who gets all the love, but what about Brian? Frick, dude. Okay. Brian Birmingham. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah, let's start this. Thank you for joining me. I've just been watching videos of the final moments of the Wild Classic Beta of Ragnaros uh, stomping on everyone in Ogremar, and it was joyous. What a great idea to spawn, spawn him in for Molten Core. Who came up with it? 
Uh, that was one of our live Oz producers. It was a great idea of his. We really liked being able to go back to the feeling of small community where everybody knows each other that we had in the original launch of WoW. We did crazy things on the servers as they were shutting down during the original beta test, so we wanted to do some kind of throwback to them. We had the idea of what if we spawned Rag and Stormwind and Ogremar, and what if we followed that up with the Guardians of Blizzard and have them run across the world chasing everybody down and killing as we wipe out the servers and turn them off. It was a lot of fun. Omar says, we wanted to create something really memorable. We thought giving everyone Thunder Fury as a drop as they could pick up as drops they could pick up. Brian Birmingham, it was a bit harder than we expected for people to kill the Sons of Flame uh, and get the Thunder Furies we put out there, but we did see some people running around with him. He says, I remember people trying to get Thunder Fury for the first time. It was a very long, convoluted, extensive process, uh, and therefore Thunder Fury weapons, one of only a few legendary weapons in the game at the time, were very, very rare. Brian Birmingham. Oh yeah, I was one of those people. I raided Molten Core for so long back in the day, I was in the one binding club where you got one of them, but not the second one. You needed both to complete the quest. Every time we killed Baron Geddon, I was like, please, please, please let the second one drop, and it never did. <clears throat> I was obsessed with Rag and Molten Core all those years ago, and loved seeing him come back to prominence. It was bizarre being able to solo him because of all the level cap increases, but those old raids aren't new to anyone anymore. So what do you do about counting world first boss kills in Classic WoW? Do they override the original scores? That's not fair. Uh, surely people already know the strategies. Okay, this is a whole discuss this is a whole can of worms, and we might talk about this tomorrow. Okay. We might we might I I, I might talk about this. This is a whole can of worms. But We'll keep going. We don't count them. That's a community thing. Uh, we see that Omar says we see they happen. So we're aware of them, right? It's certainly still a race for people who want to do that, but I would encourage people to do it at their own pace. There's still a challenge there. We've all seen it. We all know how to do it, but there's still a wrong road to go. Long road to go. Which strategy for optimizing your gear, which leveling routes, how to invest in and gear up each character. There's still going to be a bit of a debate. We've seen a lot of surprising results where people thought they knew how things worked in classic, but they don't. True. <laughs> True, we have seen that. What kind of things? Well, we made a post on our forums about exact hit rate calculations. Some of the fun is trying to figure out in the minutia of these combat equations. The hit chance against a boss creature was 8 or 9%. No one could figure it out. So we confirmed it was 8%, but people were, were pointing out, oh, but I have 8 plus 8 hit percent. Wait, I have plus 8 hit plus 8% hit chance on my gear and I'm still missing the boss. You guys must have it wrong. We dug in there and said, actually, if a boss is three levels higher than you, it ignores your first 1% bonus to hit. So it's 8% chance to miss and your first point of plus 1% chance to hit is totally ignored. So basically, that's whenever you would want 9%. It's really detailed in the new show, but uh, this edge case that existed back then and we made sure we went back and restored those things. We have a tremendous community of incredibly dedicated fans, especially when trying to discover these combat mechanics. There was a recent issue with crit percentage chance. We didn't release the numbers, uh, the actual math, so they sat there for whole weekends punching turtles for hours and hours on end to generate thousands and thousands of these combat log entries, which they did a tremendous amount of maths on and ended up deriving very accurate numbers through sheer force of will. It's that kind of community and devotion that fuels our devotion and passion. <clears throat> I assume people would already have those calculations from way back when. They have them almost exactly right. The mechanics have changed in all these expansions, so as people have gotten better and better at figuring equations out, we've changed them over time as we've made different design decisions. When we roll things all the way back to classic, they have the best guesses they had at the time, and as they keep working on things and testing things, they're going to get closer and closer. They have better tools today. I'm sure they will eventually figure it out. But going back to the original question, how that affects the race to world first, there is still a race that if there is still a race there if people want to have it. We will have phased content rollout, so Ragnaros will be available at the beginning on August 27th when we release. But the later raids like Blackwing Lair, Encourage, and Next Ramus will release in later phased content rollouts. Okay, so let's make a Ragnaros prediction. How long until someone downs him? Brian Birmingham. Haha, <laughs> I'm sure it will take years. All right, obviously joking. Uh, ha, so hard. Well, we actually have a little pool going around on the office. I'm not going to say who picked what, but it's definitely of interest to us as well. A little bit of fun we like to engage in. I think I have the longest number. I'm betting on Rag, Omar, and the others are betting on the players. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think, uh, kind of for me, what I think about this, I, I think it's technically possible to kill it in the first, in the first week. Right. I, I talked to some other people about it and, and like getting all the reps and stuff like that. 
I think it's technically possible. I don't know for sure, actually. I, I'm, I'm not 100% positive on it because I haven't seen it happen, right? But uh, there's a lot of people who think that you can, uh, you can actually get all the reps and stuff within the first week. So if you can max level and get all the reps and stuff within the first week, then um, you could technically go and do the raid. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think people are going to have a, in some ways, people are going to have a harder time leveling than they expect. Uh, but in other ways, it might be a little bit easier, right? Like the concept of uh, dungeon leveling and stuff like that. So I don't know. I personally don't know what's going to happen. Um, is it possible that I get it done in the first week? Maybe. Now, I think like speedrunning MMOs, I think that's fine, right? Like different people want different things, right? Different people want different things out of their game experience. So for me... I like to play the game at like a high level, right? Like I like to play the game and, and like, you know, be good at the game. That's, that's what I want to do. But at the same time, like I'm not as interested in speed runs. I'm not as interested in, in like the, the very, very top end of it. Now I think that stuff's cool and I have a lot of respect for it, right? People going for like world first race and stuff like that. It's going to happen in classic. I mean, people, people are going to be interested in what, who's going to be the first guild that downs it, right? I, I think to say that, oh, well, world first happened 14 years ago, blah, blah. It's like, dude, it's a, it's a different game, right? Like, world first in vanilla was a different accomplishment than world first in classic, right? It's still going to be an accomplishment, like, and you should still give those people credit, right? Because they're going to have to spend weeks preparing mats and farming and this and that, getting everything ready to where whenever they go into the raids... They just go in and, and they they have all their stuff ready to go and they they go kill the first they kill all the bosses first like I think that's cool now I'm not gonna do that but I do think it's cool that other people are gonna do that people have the knowledge now yeah so what more of a world first race would there be for killing these raids all the information all the knowledge everything is out there right. So now the race doesn't come down to who can figure everything out and do all that stuff and, and have better gear and all that stuff and, and go into it kind of like they do with the world first race in retail. But Insomniac it comes down to you just your sub for six months. You sexy beast. <laughs> Thanks, Insomniac. Thanks for the six months. It comes down to preparation and, and being ready to go. People are all in private servers. People are always interested to hear like, oh, who, who was the first guild that cleared whatever. Right. It's just a different game, right? It's a different game than retail. It's a different game than retail vanilla, right? So I, I think surely, like, yes, getting getting something like World First and Classic or whatever, like that that's that's a feather in your cap. That's an accomplishment, right? You don't want to like, why would you take that away from people? You know, that, that might be some, not something that that might not be something that I am particularly interested in, in terms of myself doing it, but. If I go and, oh, that's dumb, take that away from people, no way. Like, that's that's going to be incredibly impressive, right? You spent weeks farming and getting your your consumes and everything ready to go. I think it's cool. I want word last rag kill. Yeah. Hey. In a sense. World last rag. That's a bigger accomplishment. Because then nobody will ever have killed rag after you. Boom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, with the closed beta just finished, what have you what have you been noticing about how people have been playing it? Uh, a lot of times, I said I was going to talk about that tomorrow, but whatever. I mean, I, I couldn't I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Uh, a lot of time has passed since the original launch. Are people's habits different, or are people slipping easily back into rhythms they used to have? What have you seen? One thing I noticed is just how passionate people were about the beta. Our expectation of the beta is generally we'll get a lot of people to come in, try things out for a little bit, and they'll say, okay, I'm going to wait and wait until release until now. I've helped you guys test, and now I'm finished. We were really thrilled and blown away by just how many people wanted to play night after night, even though they knew these characters are going to get wiped out before we release. It really blew us away how dedicated people were. Omar says, I was really impressed with the varied ways players would engage with the game. A lot of our fans are very dedicated mathematicians or statisticians. And they sat there and figured out all the combat math. Other players were very exploratory and wanted to engage in the world. So they wandered into higher level areas to poke and prod. <laughs> Some players wanted to just hang out in the capital cities and meet other players. Others leveled up repeatedly or helped other players level up. There was this great variation, even though this was just temporary, which we did not expect, but we loved very much. 
Has there been any unexpected feedback from the beta? Any issues you've seen and want to tell people you're aware of and are addressing? For instance, I've seen people talking a fair bit about layering and opinions are divided on whether it's working. Brian says, the only thing I really want to call out on layering is a lot of people were wondering if the population thresholds in the beta were accurate and they're not. Yeah, okay, that's, that's good. We've talked about that before. Uh, there were some people who said, did they just turn this on to test it functionally to make sure it worked? That's accurate. We set the thresholds much lower on the beta than we would for live because we wanted to make sure we were actually testing the feature. There were other things people pointed out as bugs that we were not expecting. Uh, there were some Hunter animation issues, Omar says. There have been a lot of changes we've had to undo so Hunter gameplay was accurate to how it originally was, not just in combat mechanics, but movement, aesthetics, and animation. There are a lot of subtle things our Hunter community has been very helpful to point out, Brian says. Oh, Hunters. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, what do you do now between beta closing and WoW Classic launch? Uh, Omar, bug smash. Uh, that's exactly right. We've collected all these bugs, so now what we're doing is prioritizing and crushing them out as quickly as we can. We're trying to make sure we get the most impactful and obvious bugs, the most combat affecting and aesthetic affecting, and make sure we push those to the front and focus on those and get them crushed to a good, stable, and hopefully authentic feeling release. Funny you should mention authentic feeling. Authentic feeling. Remember what we talked about yesterday? Ragrama, good night, dude. We'll see you later, man. What we talked about yesterday was basically how I, I hope they put a better emphasis on this as opposed to trying to keep it so like no changes on the back end, right? Not not uh, not tampering with the 1.12 data. Right. That was that was one of their design principles. And uh, I think going for authentic feeling. Which is going to be hard because of everything else that's all things considered. Right. You have 16 debuff slots, 1.12 itemization, 1.12 talents. Um, basically, everything is end game except for the phases. So the content that's available. So you you have end game rag in phase one. So. You're taking the post, and, and I'm not going to talk about this as much just because we talked about it yesterday, but you're taking the post, right? You're taking this end of the spectrum, and you're moving it this way. And you're taking this end of the spectrum, and you're moving it this way, right? Or, or not the spectrum, but like, look at this. This is like a boss strength, and this is player strength. So player strength is going up. Boss strength is going down. This is going to be very different. You're, you're effectively making the game easier. And that's that's my concern, right? This, this inherently takes you away from that authentic feeling. This works against the authentic feeling. Because no changes, 1.12 is technically vanilla WoW, right? And if you wanna say, oh, well, no changes, right? That's what the community wants. That's what this was. I, I, this is no changes is almost a meme, right? Like I, I know people want to play the same game they played back then, but like I said, if this means that they increase or, or, or change armor, resist, health, damage, right? You change data, okay? You change data that's on the back end that's in the code in order to give you this thing, authentic feeling that what the players will actually experience, right? This is the most important thing, right? Because what I'm worried about is that the raids are just gonna be way too easy. Obviously retail raids are, are more mechanically intensive, right? Everybody knows that. And for the 1%, for the one percenters, it's not gonna make a difference. These guys are gonna go in and clear the raids on the first day. No, no, like th these guys are, these guys are going to do that either way, right? The problem is for the typical player, right? You don't want to take away from the typical player, the, the feeling of accomplishment, the grind, having to work for killing these bosses and stuff by basing the game off of 1.12, which again, is technically, that, that's technically vanilla, 
right? That's technically vanilla. That's technically no changes, but you're doing 1.12 everything except for content, which is content is 1.1 and 1.2 really. It's, it's, con it's 1.2 content with 1.12 everything else. So that, that is my concern. And like I said, I could be wrong about this. I talked about this a ton yesterday, so I'm not going to talk about it too much more than that. But, and, and again, I could be wrong, but we haven't seen the raids tested, right? We've only seen up to level 40. So because we've only seen up to level 40, I, this is purely, what? This is purely speculation on the concerns of 1.12 itemization class balance changes all that with 1.2 content 1.2 content right well it, it's not even truly 1.2 content because it's the 1.12 version of 1.2 content right 1.12 version of 1.2 content I don't think you should artificially make classic harder than it's supposed to be, right? But I think what's happening here is you're making it easier than it's supposed to be. No, not virgin. Virgin. Vir yeah, virgin. S I O N. Can you guys not read this? I have good handwriting. They can't do anything to make it harder. Well, I mean, they, they technically could do something to make it harder, right? But uh, I, I don't think they should try and make it harder artificially, right? But uh, what's happening is they're making it easier, essentially. And, and that's that's my concern, right? Anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to post that YouTube video where I, I talked about it for like an hour yesterday. Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post that on YouTube probably tonight after stream. So uh, I, I don't want to talk about it too much because I, I, was, I was on it yesterday. It's, it's been like handwriting of an eight-year-old. Okay, am I going to have to get a tablet? I, okay, I'm going to get a tablet so you guys can understand whenever I'm writing on paint. How does that sound? I get a tablet and I actually I actually handwrite instead of trying to use a mouse. Uh, yay or nay? MC is easy. I went there today and one-shot everything. Nice. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah. Anyway, funny you should mention authentic feeling. One thing I remember about original WoW launch was cues. Lots of cues. That's the authentic experience. It would be fitting, wouldn't it, if Classic had the same? Omar laughs. <laughs> okay, Omar, haha. -ha. Okay, next question. Uh, what are you going to do to prepare for launch load? Do you actually expect any cues? Um, Brian Birmingham says, our goal is, <laughs> is to get as many people into the game and playing as possible. That's what we want. We don't want people to wait in a queue. But part of this problem is, or part of this is a problem of prediction. How many people are going to show up? We're trying, just like we did in 2004, to make our best guesses in terms of what we're going to see and make sure we have plans in place to prepare for those so we can minimize the cues. If players blow us away again, there will be cues until we can fix something, right? They're, so they're saying, uh, basically, if there's too many people trying to log into one server, then there's going to be cues, right? We're better prepared than we were in 2004 to respond to that situation. So if there are cues, I wouldn't expect them to last for very long. In terms of days or weeks after launch, launch day is always craziest. Hopefully you'll see a queue on launch day, but you won't in the next couple of days or weeks. How big is the WoW Classic launch in comparison to something like a WoW expansion? Is it different internally? Uh, well, there's some differences and similarities. We'll likely set up a war room, like NASA Mission Control, where we have all hands on deck. On one hand, it's a little bit simpler because what players will be doing is more known, but on the other hand, it's much more complicated because we've built out, effectively, a whole new infrastructure, and that's something we typically don't do for an expansion. An expansion launch is much more of a software upgrade. Our classic launch will include hardware deploys in all the various regions, something we haven't done in almost 15 years. Definitely. In terms of rough sizing, we're treating it as the same level of same level of event internally as a major expansion launch. It's all hands on deck. The whole World of Warcraft team is lending a hand, making sure we're good to go. Make sure you order lots of pizza. There you go. <clears throat> so what happens in terms of scaling up and down after launch? If loads of people flood in, how quickly can you scale up? And conversely, if the classic novelty quickly wears off, how quickly can you scale down? 
Brian says, well, that's exactly what makes it a complicated problem. We don't really know. We're trying to make sure we have various controls in place to scale in either direction. We might have both things happen. More people show up on launch day and we have to expand capacity. And then as players distribute throughout the world and play less and less every day, we do have controls to go in both directions. Omar says our systems are much more evolved than when, than when we launched 15 years ago. So we have a much more flexible infrastructure able to respond more quickly. Chandler, this isn't Windows Vista. This is Okay, so many people come in and keep saying, why is SVAN running Windows Vista? This is this is Windows XP. <laughs> How, like it's not Vista. <laughs> okay. Like okay, were you were you guys even alive whenever Windows XP came out? How many years has it been? Edgar just resubbed for six months, less than a month to classic. I can't you, believe we've finally come this far. I know. Vanilla dude. brains engage. Five head. There you go. Thank you for the six months, man. Windows XP came out in 2001. Wait, support has ended? Am I at risk? Whatever. Um, <clears throat> so anyway. Uh, let's see. We do not have it available. Oh, 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 sorry. Original WoW had a lot of problems with gold farming. The umbrella term used to refer to the black market practice of people, not Blizzard, uh, selling World of Warcraft gold. What? They, people didn't call it gold farming. Everybody farms gold. What the heck? Visa didn't. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. Let me make sure I didn't miss any of these other ones. Uh, Logue, thank you for the Twitch Prime seven months. Insomniac, thank you for the six months. That kid's a scootin'. Thank you for the three months. Be Shady, thank you for the Twitch Prime. L White Monkey, thank you for the Twitch Prime. I think we got everything else. I got Lupus. I got all that. Okay. Now, of course, you can legitimately buy gold in WoW using the token system. Is this available in Classic? No. Uh, it's not going to be in Classic, although players have pointed out that since it's a shared sub, if you want to farm a bunch of gold in Modern WoW and use that to re-up your subscription, that does get you another month of Classic as well. Uh, so you expect gold farming issues again? Brian says, as long as a human is at the keyboard and they're actually running around doing things, farming materials for your raids, farming gold, farming herbs, were activities that were okay, they were normal gameplay. Really where we get concerned is when someone has got some kind of automation program doing the gameplay for them. That's against our terms of service and we'll have better detection algorithms and techniques today than we had before. So we hope that will be sufficient to keep it under control. Yeah, see like, this is a... This is like gold farming is fine. Like everybody farms gold. Yeah, literally, literally everybody farms gold. Marfin made it. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. Gary Orr, thank you for the four months. Going forward, while Classic have dedicated post-launch development team, how's it carved up internally? I don't want to get too much into specifics, but we're part of the World of Warcraft team. It's the World of Warcraft team should be Classic, but there are dedicated resources. So... Yeah, basically, like, they, they have, like, two separate teams within one team, right? Like, that's that's kind of the vibe that I, I, I get. That's that's my understanding of it. Uh, your boy, G-Bear. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. Ian has a coast to set up BlizzCon 2019. There would be four phases of WoW Classic content patches. That was back in November. Has anything changed? We did that. Classic community, we did that, dude. We were We were hot on this. Hardcore talking about changing it from four to, to six or seven phases, and we did that. That is that is Pog you. That was us. Okay. Wow, Relic, thank you for the one year resub. Thank you so much, dude. Classic community at its finest. That has changed. I'm glad you asked. It is no longer four phases, but it's six. Uh, phase one is the launch phase and Rag and Anixia are going to be available. Phase two, we're going Dire Maul and PVP honor system. You'll be able to kill people in the world during phase one, but there won't be an honor system tracking it. Phase three is going to be the first two battlegrounds, AV and Warsong alongside BWL. In phase four, we release AB alongside ZG and the Green Dragons. Phase five is AQ. And then finally, phase six is Nax. Part of the reason we changed is that we had a lot of feedback from the community that four phases was too few. There were distinct periods of time that they wanted to recapture where certain content wasn't available or certain rewards. 
It would trivialize the content. For example, people were concerned that if you got Battleground Reputation Rewards too early, it would make it trivial to go through Molten Core and Nixia and their Wrath. Dude, so those of you guys who don't know the story, right? Those of you guys who don't know the story, uh, whenever I got a chance to stream at BlizzCon last year, uh, I sat down with Yithisins the day after BlizzCon. He's East Sakaar on Twitch, and unfortunately he's not at Blizzard anymore. But uh, I, I sat down with Yithisins, and like, he'll tell you, I, I showed up and I had like, a long like a laundry list of issues i was like well you, you guys need to look at this like basically completely talking to him about like how i felt about the uh how, how i feel about the Zandra classic announcement right. or not the announcement but basically what they were months. talking about at last classic Christmas. is so close i can taste it thank you for all you have done and continue to do for your community i appreciate you bro thank you xander i i really really appreciate that man and thank you for the seven months too so Good job, Rob. Just your sub for 13 months. Good job, months. Rob. Thank you for the 13 months. Love your months. content, man. Can't wait for classic. 27 more days, Pog. 27 more days. Very close. So, so one of the things Yethisens and I talked about was how basically they said there's going to be four phases of content release. And, and basically exactly what Brian says here, that <clears throat> myself and a lot of other people were really hot on, were was basically saying that like look you can't have the game released in only four phases like there's so many different issues right he he touches on it here right trivializing content this and that uh but it also has to do with kind of like the ebb and flow of the game right if you have four phases of content release and wow vanilla wow i think was roughly 25 months right i think it was 25 months so We'll just say two years, right? And I think that's probably what they'll go with uh, back in the day. So it's it's approximately two years. So if you only have four phases of release, right? You have one, you have the launch, two, three, four, right? How many months in between all this, right? Like, are you going to go six months, 12 months, 18 months between patches? Six months is a long time to not have any sort of update happen to a game, right? In an ideal world, they'd, they'd probably do all 11 patches, but they're not going to do that. They, they, what they decided to do was package basically two patches in and go with six phases and do two patches at a time, right? So this was the old system, right? This was the old system. So they got rid of this, and basically what they decided to do What they decided to do was, I, th I think they're probably going to end up doing about two years. Make it six. So we got one, two, three, four, five, and then six, right? And it's going to look somewhat like this, not exactly. I think the last phase is going to be a long phase, right? This will be phase six. This will be phase five, four, three, wait. One, two, three, four five, six, right? I think six will be the longest phase, right? Um, two years feels very long. Well, that's what it's going to be. I mean, if you look at the original, uh, if you look at the original, let's see this. Vanilla WoW patch. <sighs> patch 1. Point, WoW patch 2.0 WoW wiki. Okay. So <clears throat> we know launch was when November 23rd, uh, November 23rd, 2004. So patch 2.0 was on the 5th of December, 2006. So this is just over two years later is whenever the 2.0 patch came out. Now this, you know, 2.0, this is when the patch hit, right? The actual release of Burning Crusade was on January 17th, 18th. Burning Crusade launch. Uh, 16th, my bad. So January 16th, right, was whenever Burning Crusade actually launched. So um, regardless, the Burning Crusade 2.0 patch was about about 24 to 20, 24 and a half months later, right? So that's why I think you're going to go with roughly two years. Um, now, I should have closed that. Uh, now, with that being said... If you look at patch 
1.12. Okay. This patch is in 22nd of August, 2006. This is going to be packaged in with the Nax patch, right? The idea is that it's packaged in with Nax. Um, the Nax patch happened on the 20th of June, 2006. Okay. If the Nax patch happens 20th of June, 2006, and you're going back to patch 1.9, that came out in January, if I, if I remember correctly. Let's see. 10th or third of January, 2006. So 20th of June to third of January. You're looking at about six months. McConnell Ward became the tier three S fan. The arenas do something in BFA. You need to go big dick. Well, here's the thing. I, I, I actually would, right? I honestly would, but I think by the time I get geared up enough, I think by the time that I actually get geared up enough uh, to do anything, Classic's basically going to come out, right? Because I was playing BFA a little bit early on, but or not early on, but a few days ago, but, but I kind of had the realization that it's just going to take me too long. Otherwise, I would. Like, I'm just, I'm so far behind. And thanks for the tier three 20 months, dude. Thank you, man. So... Nax was out for about six months and not many people cleared it. Yeah, that's how that's how hard Nax was back in the day, right? That was the uh, that that's basically what it was. So, yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, how do you get the Black Rush Battle Tank? Uh, it's it's from Ringing the Gong. You have to do the quest for the AQ for AQ launch. So Nax out. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be so easy to gear up and do arenas. I think the only way that it would be easy to gear up and do arenas is if I do, is if I like basically hop into a run with Asmin and my gear is so bad and everybody else's gear is so good because he only invites people that are really well geared and that they can trade me all the items that they don't need. That's basically it, right? <clears throat> so yeah, that's, that's basically how it works. Uh, best educated guess. What do you think Blizzard will do post next? Something like OSRS? I think they're going to do Burning Crusade. Uh, I, I think they're going to do Burning Crusade. I think like a classic plus could be cool, potentially, right? Uh, I don't I don't think it's a bad idea, but I also think Burning Crusade should probably be like the first priority before like a classic plus or something like that. So <clears throat> do you think vanilla feats of strength achievements will be attainable in classic account wide? No, uh, I think there will be no achievement crossover from classic to retail. Um, so yeah, basically, here's my point. My point is, is that phase five to phase six, phase five is probably going to last about six months. I think, I think, I think phase five is probably going to last maybe, maybe like five months and this will last like six months or something, right? Something like that. So this will probably last like three months. This will probably last, what is this? This is Dire Maul and PVP and then Blackwing layers here. This will probably last about three months. Let's see, Blackwing layer. Hmm. Blackwing layer. And then this is going to be the Emerald Dragons and ZG. So, I mean, you're almost looking at like three, 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 and then that's one year at this point. And then you got six, six, right? And then that's about two years. So now they could go with a faster timeline than two years. I don't know if they will or not, right? And I don't think it'll be exactly three months, exactly three months, exactly three months, exactly three months. But uh, I think that I wouldn't be surprised if this was roughly what it was. Blackwing Layer released, I think, after like seven months, seven or eight months uh, around that time. Right. Roughly um, after launch. So getting that at like basically the six month mark. Um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be surprised. And then you have like a constant flow of release. That's my big thing with Classic WoW, dude. That's my big thing with Classic WoW where I'm saying. I think if if the beta were still live right now, if the beta were still live right now, and it was it was the full release of the game and we could go to level 60 and do all that, I think now is about the time where we kind of like if you've been playing a lot, you're kind of gonna start to taper off and, and there's gonna be a few less things to do. And what is this? We are sitting at July, June. May 15th. So you're sitting at about the two and a half month mark, right? That's pretty good, right? So if we're at the two and a half month mark right now, 
then you have another half a month ish before the next patch comes out. And if you've been playing the game a lot, then you don't really have much dead time before there's new content added into the game. DM plus honor system. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is why, this is why I was, I was so like, and, and this is why so many people were so insistent on going to six phases instead of the four phases that they originally planned. Uh, because if this lasted six months, like for sure, I almost think, I, I think that almost for sure, Classic would have been like dead after a few months. Maybe they open up Classic to the community after Nax or BC for community creators. Uh, I don't think they're going to do something like that because I, I, I don't think they would let go of it like that, you know. But thank you for the thousand bits, Adler. I mean, could it be cool? Sure. Are you only counting streamers or people able to play eight plus a day? Eight plus what? Minutes? <laughs> what I'm saying is people playing like nonstop, right? I think... I think that if you're playing like normal, like not like a crazy person, then you know when you're probably going to hit level 60? I think the typical player, is, it's probably going to take them a little bit. Like it might be two months before you hit 60. Why are we still talking about this next topic? Why are you here? You want to leave? Because you can stay if you want, but if you're going to complain about talking about classic, then you can just get the hell out of here. So anyway, uh, yeah, I think two months to three months for a typical player. This is probably how long it'll take it at classic. Like if you're playing just a few hours a day, you see what I'm saying? Those people just miss out and fall behind the six patches need to come out fast. No, I don't know. Uh, I was going to say, I'll have a busy work schedule. I'll most likely have to uh, have time to hit 60 in that three-month time period and gear up for what I'd like to before the next phase starts. Yeah, and, and then that's perfect, right? I mean, the next phase will start, and you still won't have 100% everything done, right? I think I think Five, looking at the concerns of the typical player... At this point, I'm just resubbing for the Minecraft server. JK, love you, dude. <laughs> Thanks, guy. Thank you for the four months, dude. Uh, let me let me, uh, let me keep going, and then I'll, and I'll look at the notifications again. Um but yeah, I think the concerns of the typical player is is probably what's the the most important thing to look at, right? The concerns of the typical player is probably the most important thing to look at, right? Because because I think it doesn't really change for the one percent, right? It goes back to what I was saying about this thing over here. Okay, see, after not touching this for a while. And then coming back and looking at it, I see what you guys are saying. My handwriting was really, really bad. Uh, but I'm gonna post. I'm gonna post the video because yesterday on Daily Dose of Classic, yesterday I, I talked about this like really in depth for like an hour, and uh, I, I, I'm gonna post that on my YouTube channel tonight. Um, so yeah, guys, here's what I'm doing. By the way, it, I, I saw that Asma just ended. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm starting. What what do I hear? On the comment on Asma's channel. Um, okay, so Sleazy T donated three dollars two to three months. That's probably going to be me little Yeah, and that's that's totally fine Sleazy. Yeah, that's that's totally fine uh, Everybody plays classic a different way and that's that's totally cool um, it, It's just what you're what what you want to do, right? Thanks for the three dollars, dude. So Cutie, thank you for the two months and wonky eye. Thank you for the twitch prime. Thank you guys um, so yeah, basically I, um, what I've been doing is I've been starting out my streams like this. I call it Daily Dose of Classic. I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut these, and I'm going to put them on my YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm starting all my streams like this now. So I go in, we talk about Classic for a little bit, and then from there, uh, we're going to go on. We're going to keep doing the variety thing. Today, we're going to play Warcraft 3. So it, it'll be really fun. It'll be good. So that's the, that's kind of how I've been approaching uh, my streams, and I'm probably going to keep doing this until Classic launch. So yeah, if you guys want to sub to my YouTube channel, yeah, Poontang Clan uh, just linked it. You guys can sub to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash SFANTV. There you go. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, I, I think the concerns of the typical players is what needs to what, what they need to look at. Uh, it's, it's pretty important because this is, from a player population perspective, this is the highest population that you have is like the typical player, right? Not, not the one percenters, but the average player. I could listen to you talk about classic for years, my dude. Well, thanks, dude. Thanks, Dinoco. What's your Twitter? Twitter.com slash SFANTV. 
There you go. What's up with Stay Safe? He quit streaming at all until Classic? No, he was doing the Red Bull World First Race. Uh, Stay Safe was doing the Red Bull World First Race, and he's... Uh, oh. He's coming back to he's he's I think he's flying back to America soon or I think I think he'll get home soon. So yeah, it looks like 140. Yeah, frick. So it just I'm gonna like get a tablet. Three months. Oh, hello there. Hello, thank you, Tyler. Thanks for the three months. I'm gonna get a tablet so I can actually like handwrite instead of having to use a mouse. Uh, I'll, I'll do that. I, I do this so much. I should get a tablet. Um, but secret don't need a dollar. Hey, as fan, penis, penis, penis. If I wasn't heterophile, I would accept you on Tinder and we would make love. Thank you. I love you. Way too much alcohol right now. Also frozen pizza in the oven penis. Thank Can't you. wait for classic got Chiba Skaki. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Secret. Thank you for the $3. Appreciate that. Uh, wouldn't it be easier to use the text tool to type? No, because my brain. Uh, my brain, I have to write it. Uh, text tool is boring. So, um... Yeah. So anyway, that's that's how I feel about the six phases of content release, right? I'm I'm, I'm very happy that they moved to six, uh, because four phases was was not nearly enough. And again, like I said, kind of going back to this, this is what my concern is about: 1.12 itemization, class balance, player everything, right? Itemization, talents, all that stuff, uh, and then doing 1.2 content, doing 1.12 version of 1.2 content. So you're doing like rag like post nerf you're doing the dungeon raids post nerf so the players are player strength is going to go up and then the boss strength is going to go down so you're effectively making classic like uh, easier right so you, you want to get that authentic feeling of classic wow and then Isn't if you're if you're so for four months can't wait for classic thank Keep you Z up Miss. the good work thank you for the four months scotty boy underscore 97 just resubbed for five months monk hmm Thank you. Thank you for the, the five months, Scotty boy. Thank you, man. So, uh, yeah, basically what's happening here is if you, if you try so hard to no changes, we don't want to change the 1.12 data, which is like behind the scenes. That's the data tables and stuff like that. Sleazy T donated $3. What should I play in classic balance? Druid pleb in the mage group right here. One boom game with the mages. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's how it goes, dude. Um, okay, so thank you for the $3, Sleazy. But yeah, as, as I was saying, uh, if you're so insistent on no changes, we're not going to change the 1.12 data because, yes, that's technically vanilla, and that's like you know what you would consider to be no changes, right? You're actually going to be taking away from this authentic feeling because of some other design decisions that they've made to base everything off of 1.12 and then release the content, even the 1.12 version of content, as 1.2, right? So 1.2 con like 1.12 version of 1.2 content. That's basically what's happening on, on launch. So by by being so insistent on this, you're actually working away the most important bullet point of authentic feeling. These are the three. I, I talked about this a ton yesterday, and, and and it's it's been on my mind so much, but I just have to get this out again. There's three. Like there's three bullet points, right? They're, of their design philosophy for classic WoW. They want to go one. They want the authentic vanilla feeling. Two, they want to have an emphasis on the social dynamic of vanilla WoW, right? And have that, that social aspect of the game intact. And then three is not messing with the 1.12 data, right? That's the fancy way of saying no changes. So what's happening is bullet point one and bullet point three, they're, these are conflicting... These are conflicting bullet points. These are conflicting decisions. So they're they're actively working away against uh, they're actively working against each other. Whenever you get to this point, right, it all falls in line initially. But whenever you 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 break it down and you start looking at the nitty gritty, you're actually going to move away from the authentic feeling by being so insistent on not changing anything from the 1.12, right? So again, yeah, I'm done with that. There's going to be a video on my YouTube channel where I talked about that for like an hour. Uh, I, I just, it's, it's on my brain. So I had to touch on it again. So yeah. <clears throat> Why don't you use text boxes? Cause my brain is weird and I, and I like writing it out with a mouse. Um, yeah. So I don't know. And like I said, like I said, I could be totally wrong about this. This is purely speculation, right? This is purely speculation. But what I'm concerned about 
is that the early content ends up being so easy, even for the typical player, that you, you really trivialize the game and, you, and you're taking away like the, the true experience of Vanilla WoW from people. Obviously, we all know that mechanics are in retail are harder, right? Like, I think anybody who's played both will tell you that. Um, but the, it's, it's not about mechanics. It's about the other stuff. So... <clears throat> Anyway, uh, finally, what happens when the six phases are done? Uh, what happens with expansion rollout? I don't know that we have any plans right now for sure. Uh, we focus entirely on WoW Classic and making sure it's going to be as correct and authentic as possible. And we're really excited to see what fans say when they're experiencing it. We started this whole project as a love letter to fans. They've been demanding this from us. We wanted to respond and give them what they've been asking us for. <laughs> we will continue to listen to community feedback and we want to know what people think and want to see next. So they say no plans right now, right? They say no plans right now. Um, but I mean, they, they've, they basically like, I get the vibe personally that if classic does well, they're going to be doing running crusade auto with 20 gifted subs, dude, auto. Thank you so much, man. Holy crap. 20 gifted subs and Mud Monkey with a Twitch Prime. Dude, thank you guys so much. Auto, 20 gifted subs. That is what I'm talking about, dude. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. So, guys, that was our daily dose of classic for today. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'd appreciate it if you sub, if you like, if you leave a comment. Kind of let me know what you guys want me to talk about. And I'm starting all my streams like this. Yeah, I'm starting all my streams like this at least until Classic comes out. Or at least the majority of my streams will start this way until Classic comes out before we move on to variety and playing other games and stuff. Um, or even playing a little bit of retail, right? It just kind of depends. Uh, up until Classic comes out. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.